Yeah. Okay, so we will get started. Um, let me say, yeah, you can see me here, right? Yes. Okay, so I I'll say a few words for for you as well as for the benefit of people on the Zoom land um, about Yantian. Um, Yantian is going to be uh, defending what happened. even more here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Yantian will be defending his PhD dissertation today, uh, titled uh, Perceiving, Acting, Planning, uh, and Self Explanation a Cognitive Quartet uh, with Four Neural Networks. Um, so, and if he's successful, he'll be joining the University of Maryland as a postdoc at the Maryland Robotics Center. Um, but before he gets started, let me say a few words while people are coming in. Um, so Yankian joined our master's program back in fall 2015. Uh, but in spring 2015, he sent me a mail from Southeast University, uh, his undergraduate institution, letting me know that I have been selected as his prospective advisor in his statement of purpose. And so ready or not, here he will come. Uh, so come fall, he duly arrived in ASU and showed up in my lab with his own turtle bot robot. So that he learned all the way from China, as far as I can tell. Uh, he wanted to do robotics and he wasn't quite going to take any chances in case I didn't have robots in my lab. Uh, so he was about the only student ever to come with his own robot, certainly to my group and probably across the whole of ASU. Um, Yantian is passionate about robotics research and is certainly very, very ambitious. Uh, the first few ideas he was pitching to me for his MS thesis was so darn ambitious. There was actually one about a robot that would learn to do ballet dance from demonstrations, for example. Um, that I tried to, this is for MS thesis, so that I tried to shift him away from MS thesis. I thought I was hinting that he should maybe shift to MCS and just do courses. And a couple of weeks later, he came and said, done, I've shifted to PhD. <laughs> that, that's where you are right now. He has actually done PhD. Um, Yantian did work in the intersection of planning and deep learning in collaboration with uh, Anpi Zhu of uh, uh, San Yat-sen University and also uh, Sri Ram here. Um, and in combining vision and planning, um, you know, high level planning and uh, uh, visual uh, surveillance um, uh, for activity recognition in collaboration with the Bausch and Lee's group here. Uh, but his heart has always been in robotics which I guess to his mind brings all these hard fundamental problems together. So he did an internship at ABB with Jia Jun Wang, who is actually on the committee, one of the committee members, um, and energized by that internship, did some work on affordance learning and robotics uh, grasping, and most recently about using self-explanation as a way to help robots reduce the ambiguity in the human demonstrations. Now, so much about his research, Yantian is highly independent and quite good at taxi advising. Um, as Sebastian himself can vouch from many of the meetings that we've been in, there is always too thin a line between advising Yantian and being advised by Yantian. Um, he even made me wear this shirt so that I will match this shirt today. Okay. Um, so I don't know if I've been the most effective advisor for Yankian, given some of the semantic distance between our interests. I'm not as much of a robotics guy, for example. But there's no question that Yankian is a Yochenai, a Yochen group member. Uh, we would have been much poorer without him in the group. But one thing, Yankian started collaborations with almost everyone in the group at one point or other, including even undergraduate research students. And true to his form, most of these ideas that he would pitch to these undergrads, for example, were ambitious, and so not all of them led to completed projects. But no one could accuse Yantian of any lack of ideas. He's unstintingly kind and keenly interested in the well-being of the people around him in the lab, and I've never seen him lose temper. We have always been asking too many questions of him in terms of where is he going, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I never seen him lose temper, although Sharad, his roommate, says that he managed to make him lose it once. Um, Yankian is insanely hardworking. Between him and his roommate, Sharad, who will be defending later this month, they were almost always pitched in the lab. One year, their apartment's air conditioning broke down in the middle of summer, and the apartment people took their own sweet time slowly getting it fixed, like I think in 
couple of weeks or maybe even a month, but somehow it didn't seem to quite affect them the way it would have affected the normal people because they were anyway in the lab, so they didn't care whether there was an AC in the department, in the lab, in their room or not. Yat is also a very accomplished piano player that we found out. We all recall finally the time in Ichikai 2018 when in Stockholm, um, in, during a reception, he commanded a piano at the conference reception and started playing for us. Um, he also has a taste for fancy bikes that can't be left downstairs. So oftentimes they'll be brought to the lab and they, uh, people yell at us saying, why are the bikes here? His current one is an electric bike of the kind that only probably he has in all of Tempe, so much so that the other day when my parents and I were going on uh, for like a side thing, I see this bike going across the road. I say, that must be anti -an. And sure enough, it was the anti -an. um, so it makes him very easy to spot on roads. Uh, Yantian reads technical papers voraciously, almost as if they're pulp fiction, and is well versed in many areas of deep learning and deep reinforcement learning as they have been applied to robotics. He has the kind of talents that the industry is dying to pay big bucks for. But Yantian doesn't want to make money. He has set much higher. He has set his sights much higher. Um, so and so he's going for a poster. Um, when we all trooped into the Phoenix Convention Center some years back uh, to listen to Jeff Hinton and Jan Likun gave their talks uh, on their Turing Award, uh, my wife, Shaitali, overheard Jan Tian telling the rest of the bozos in the group, saying that they should all work hard on bigger projects so that Rob Tooth can get one of them Turing's. <laughs> okay, you may be laughing. But since Yantian is on the project, I'm certainly keeping my folks alive. Um, so thank you, Yantian, for your time in, uh, in, in the group, and I hope you will do a great job in defending your presentation. Thank you. Thank you all for the kind of introduction. And I would also like to take this opportunity to thank all of my company members. I would like to thank Dr. Gao for his strong support, strongly supporting me over the years, for giving me the freedom of exploring interesting directions in combining robotics and uh, artificial intelligence based on the neural networks. And I would also like to thank Dr. Uh, Bao Xin Yi for, uh, for supporting me on the project that involves the integration between vision and planning. And I have learned a lot from Dr. Professor Yi and also his students. I would like to thank Dr. Professor Sios Tawa for, for Having lots of helpful discussions with me and uh, lots of my uh, issues, which make me a better researcher. And finally, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Jin Jin Wang for mentoring me at APB for five and a half months. And after the initiative, I found I, I'm, I'm much better at uh, finishing robotics projects. Okay, now let me start my presentation. Considering active learning and uh, self examination are called important with four new networks. So imagine you are watching a quarter like this. You can see that there are different players who are playing different instruments. For example, there are two violins, and viola and violin cello. And all of the songs will be integrated together so that they can contribute to a even more beautiful song. And each player could be influenced, could either influenced or be influenced by other players. So similarly in, in my thesis, also interesting if, if the levels of cognitive components like the same uh -huh. Ask whether the committee members can hear you clearly. Yeah, can can my committee members hear me clearly? Zoom? Yes, that's good. Thanks, Yantian. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm speaking for them. Okay. So in my thesis, I'm also interested in researching how to how different levels of relation functions like perceiving, acting, planning, and self explanation can be tightly covered together so that, so that they can learn and adapt with each other and eventually into a much powerful intelligence. So I will start by talking about each component of one by one. The first is the perception component. 
conception is about how the Asian could understand the world. For example, there's a robot here who is doing a gradient conception. And so, so the same with the environment, uh, some useful information like uh, where and what was the, the region that could be quite in the form of the and that would be used uh, by the higher level decision making component. And sometimes they could even extract the semantic level information like uh, the sync graph for higher level combination functions like uh, planning and decision making. Second component is acting. Basically, it's the robot use perception function to extract uh, some information, visual information, and such information could directly trigger some control commands so that the robot can use them to gradually change the state of the world. However, sometimes robot robot might be you know, some kind of long term thinking. I want, I want to have some solution that is guaranteed to be optimal. In such cases, we will need a model like a baseline or semantic level models. And if the model space is too large, we will do some locally and approximate search and find an approximately optimal solution. However, if the model is highly abstract, like a PDR model or semantic level model, then the robot can use that to find the, the guaranteed optimal solution at the level of semantics. And then Google also needs to have some lower level controllers so that each high level action could be guaranteed to be, to be successful executed to reach to the desired effect. The last component that I will talk today is a self explaining component. Self explaining is about how agents could introspect or be reflective of themselves. This means that uh, sometimes when you think about uh, what you have done before, what, what kind of mistakes you have made before, and uh, why others can success, success or finish the same task, you could, uh, when you think about this, you could uh, get some insights, which can be useful guidance for, for the future learning. And self-explaining can be put uh, on the umbrella of metacognition. And uh, let me use an example to explain this. So let's say a robot has observed a human teacher to accomplish this task. So there are, there are a block and a ring. And the task is that the uh, robot needs to push the ring to the blue region, which is also indexed by L1, and push the block to the yellow region, which is also indexed by L2. And one important Thing to note that uh, is that the blue color and the yellow color can be changed. However, L1 and L2 are static. Now, Robert could uh, explain to yourself uh, why this demonstration is successful. So, Robert could hypothesize that uh, the location or indices of the target divisions are more important than the colors of the target regions like blue and yellow. So by following this hypothesis, the robot will follow the demonstration because the two indices, two locations are fixed. So the robot ends up still pushing the ring to the yellow region and to the L1 and the block to the L2. However, the colors of the two target regions have been changed. So the environment will tell the robot that they cannot finish this task because by definition, the colors of the target regions are more important now. So we could ask yourself, what is the difference between the demonstration and its own trajectory? And by thinking about this, robot could get some for the update is self explanation hypothesis that uh, the colors of the target regions like blue and yellow are more important than indices. Then you can quickly learn this task. So interestingly, uh, the humans often 
uh, speaking to ourselves, to think about uh, the, our past. And so self-explaining behavior can be viewed as one of the key characteristics of human level intelligence. And by doing self-explanation, we hope that the future learning of lower level cognition functions can be guided and improved. Therefore, in my thesis, I focus on how the four combination functions can be coupled together. And to be specific, I focus on three threads. The first is how to cover perception and acting. The second is about the perception planning company. The third one is self-explaining behavior. And for the perception acting company, I mostly, I mostly investigate how can robots, can robots test the perception knowledge from demonstrations that can guide the learning. And for the second thread, uh, I focus on answering question if we can use plan recognition or planning to even improve the value recognition. And finally, my research investigates if we can make a cognitive agents more reflective by approximating the self-expanding behaviors of humans. And eventually we hope that uh, by covering those cognitive functions, we can accomplish uh, a better intelligence so that robots can accomplish more tasks and learn them faster and more efficiently. And here's a summary of my research. I focus on three levels of cognition functions, uh, from subconscious level to conscious level and to metacognition level. And there are many works like uh, here cloning that directly there's uh, many from perception to acting. Those books can be categorized uh, in the, at the subconscious level. However, in my work, because I'm covering per perception and acting under some context of task. So in this case, the perception would be in the middle between subconscious and the conscious. And then we go to the conscious level. In this level, at this level, sometimes we might need to have some a more strict form of background knowledge or even a model. So my research here, first the focus on if we can learn no, a shared domain model from data. And because of the model is standard, you can really adapt to other the learning of other combination functions. And with a learned model, my other works focus on if we can use the model to do plan plan revelation of planning, and if that plan revelation can also be used to include the perception of the present scenario. And the top of that way is a meta combination. And uh, my work books on if we can use that relation to improve perception and control. Now I will talk about talk about my work contrasting with the name real attention as the important skills from demonstrations to the body of grasping. I will start by talking about uh, the concept of avoidance. So avoidance is about uh, the correlations among object, action, and fact. Let's say we have three different uh, cups in different shapes. So if we want to fix them up, we, we need to use different uh, ways to grasp them and lift them up so that we can achieve the desired effect. And my work books on grasping level of borders, which is about uh, uh, learning a mapping or building a mapping from observation to where and how to grasp. And where and how to grasp this means control configuration, configurations like grasping orientations and grasping pre shapes that can be directly used by the external motion planner. And there are some 
Traditional works are about learning abundance from demonstrations. So this work basically record a huge amount of uh, grasping trajectories and record uh, their grasping config configurations and do clustering on the and with the clustering they can build a mapping from perception to control configurations. So that you they can predict the you know, testing phase that can be taken by the external motion planner. Here is an example. So the task is to pick up this. And you can see that uh, there are some green arrows that are pointed out with our grasping configurations. And we sample one and use that to generate a motion plan. And then the, the robot uh, can realize the motion plan. However, these traditional words of learning avoidance from demonstrations, they sort of decoupling the policy construction part and the avoidance learning part. So instead, in our work, we want to uh, consider if we can integrate the, the learning of avoidance and the learning of policy together based on deep learning network. Um, so there are some benefits, like uh, by integrating together the learning of the two separate modules can adapt each, with each other. And our op optimal objective is that robots should uh, imitate not only at the level of trajectories, but also humans' performance test knowledge. So what is performance test knowledge? Before talking about this, I will explain some insights that we got from cultural psychology field. So there is a close association between performance and attention. Basically, when, for example, when you focus on the handle part, you are more likely to pick it up from the handle. And more interestingly, if you shift your attention from the handle to the body, like this part, you will also shift your way of interacting with the mind by uh, grasping the body to pick it up. Oh, let's say robot is given two trajectories to pass the different marks into different ways. And we want robot to find the avoidance cue by asking itself what makes the two demonstrations different. And then we robot can figure out that it is the handle or the body that makes the two demonstrations different. So inspired by this intuitive idea, we Design our framework based on contrastive learning. Contrastive learning is about uh, how to train a model to distinguish between uh, different data points and uh, assign closer distance to data points that are in the same category. And we have we collected a trajectory that can be uh, classified into three categories. And each category means there is a very specific way to class the uh, for example, by body, by left and head, right side of handle, or front and back side of handle. And after doing contrastive learning, the little embeddings can be immediately separated in an embedding space. However, there, there, will, there is a problem if we directly use contrastive learning to this because uh, we contrast, if we do contrastive learning on the entire trajectory, they could have included many knowledge information like different initial states. However, by the definition of avoidance, it's really about the interaction with the object. So, so we propose a way to, to extract the avoidance value in the picture, which is, uh, which is when the grip will interact with the object. And these features are avoidance relevant, so we can use them to guide the learning of observation. However, we can also direct not we cannot directly use avoidance embedding because we eventually want to and we eventually want to extract useful information from the observation at every step. So 
So as what I said, we have instruct the opponents badly, and at each step we improve the guess image as observation, and then we predict the opponent's Q that will be including the input of the observation embedding. And they propose the accomplished loss to use the opponent's embedding to constrain or guide the learning of observation embedding. And finally, we, we also want to minimize the distance between the predicted action and the Action in a demonstration. And by opening, optimizing these two large functions together, we can simultaneously learn about the skills and the grasping policy. And here are the demo videos uh, based on our model. Today's demo video is more interesting. So, in the beginning, you know the folks on both of the handle and the body, and then the shapes is attention to handle and also grass grass by handle. So this is similar to the uh, conclusion observed by the cultural psychology. And here are the observation study models. In this model, we we don't use contrast learning. So we found that the robot books on almost uh, uh, books on the handles are almost all the marks. And because of this, the attention avoided skill is not uh, useful. So we want to put a decide not to follow this avoided skill and grasp by body. And this then will you in this uh, vision study we replace the our proposed uh, common shape trivial loss with normal trivial loss. So we found that uh, well, the government almost always focus on the entire mark, no matter of its shapes. So we found, so as a result, uh, the opponent skill is also not too useful for the policy part. So we may not follow the opponent skill. And we also evaluate uh, our model with respect to the evolution studies and uh, the baseline of deep learning based behavior cloning model by testing the grasping success rates. And our model achieves the best performance. In our work, we, so traditional rules of learning avoidance from demonstrations have, have benefits of avoiding the expensive procedure of collecting labels, avoidance labels. However, we went one step further. We consider if it can be very good to replace the, the unadaptable motion parameter with a learnable policy neural network. So we combine two directions together, a good skill learning from demonstrations and a deep learning based on policy learning. And for future works, it will be interesting to consider if we can learn multiple levels of interactions, which are rich, rich upon skills. And it will be also be interesting to apply our common search loss to other learning problems. However, the good skill learning makes the perception more conscious, but uh, it, it's still model free and does not support uh, any non learning thinking, which might the planning to be involved. And I will talk about this based on in a second part of uh, the initial learning models for planning. In the planning field, there are different ways of uh, you have different uh, degree of completeness of models for planning. In classical planning, we assume we have a full model, and uh, we, once we use that model to the planning, we can search an optimal solution. However, sometimes model, planning model could be incomplete, and then as a result, we can only get approximated solutions. So we call you have partial models and the solution could be used to guide the plan rather than being directly used. And in this part, I focus on if we, if we can learn the model from data rather than predefining the model. And the data that I mentioned is like this. We have a library of plan traces 
and each, each metrics will be something like this. It's a sequence of symbolic uh, activities. And looking at that, you might think that it's like uh, each act activity is like a word in a sentence. So this observation inspired us to uh, think about uh, if we can use some natural language processing techniques to help solve our planning or planning relation problem. And for planning relation problem, we assume we have the, the observation of the incomplete branches, so that there are some missing observations. So to solve the planning relation problem, we need to use a learned shared learning model to find the, the most, most likely action that can be put here, here, or here. We have the observations are missing. And we, move, we, we basically use the two natural language protection techniques. One is word embedding, and the other is a sequential generative model based on recurrent neural models. However, there is a problem for the technical framework that I just described. They assume that. The plan library only contains deterministic of plan traces. So the observation for plan relation is also deterministic. However, in the real world settings, we, we usually uh, use a camera to, to observe human activities. And the real world relation could uh, suffer from perception errors. And if we still assume the observed activity to be deterministic, it's good. Bring, bring some troubles for the high level plan regulation model, which I will explain from, from this figure. So let's see at this step. Uh, there's a price activity with the highest probability of 0 0.4. And this probability basically means that the variable model is a uh, believes that this action uh, matches a one choose. However, if this is wrong according to the one choose. Then, then, then from the perspective of color level regression model, there's no way to take uh, correct actions like uh, the other two because of the deterministic branches. So the question is, can we direct the action, action embeddings on such a sequence of distributions which represents uncertain observations of the world. Then our problem becomes this. Uh, the plan library includes uh, the distribution style plan traces. And with a plan relation problem, we have uh, observed the incomplete plan trace, uncertain plan trace, with some missing observations. And that's we have we that's we have learned the shadow for me model from the uncertain plan traces. We want to use this to solve the plan combination to find out what is most likely action. So in our work we consider three models. The distribution factor is our proposed model that can direct learn directly learn distributions. But uh, they're actually very strong distribution sequences. However, we also have a naive model which works as if the deterministic way of doing parallel regulation by taking the taking the most likely activity at each step. And we also approximate uh, this deterministic way by resampling many paths from this from the distribution sequence. So we found that we evaluated this with respect to different degrees of perception error rates. We found that when we have very high perception error rates, um, our distribution director model performs the best uh, even most of the time. However, when we have lower perception error rates, all the models perform comparably. On the other hand, we also evaluated the training plan. And our distribution black model requires as less as almost as less of training time as the, uh, the naive model. 
However, we found that the assembly based model has the linear relationship time. So we can draw the conclusion is that overall distribution vector is the best option. We got to think of this. Uh, uh, you know, more realistic settings, we need to run real model in real world, on real world data. And then we cannot assume we have the basic of, of plan observations. So we propose distribution vectors to create to bridge a gap between plan validation and real world real validation. Now the question is uh, since we have downturn thinking ability based on the then the shadow going model, can we use this downturn thinking to actually plan into plan validation to improve the perception? I will answer that question in this part by talking about our paper, Plan Recognition General Vision Modeling for Visual Recognition. And because we are using Plan Recognition to improve perception, so this will be here. So by looking at this image, where would you focus on? You might focus on the placement and also the door because you may uh, you may think that the, the door has an event where has an interesting event that could happen in the near future. So your method procedure would be like this: you focus on the moving placement, which are certain objects that you have observed, and then you try to recognize their plans. And based on plan relation, which is your long term thinking, you would also pay attention to regions where interesting events could happen. And in our paper, we focus on this part. And this is not a trivial problem because past plans are typically symbolic actions, a sequence of symbolic. Smaller actions. However, uh, the perception is, is would be in a pixel space, and connect, connecting them together could be challenging. And I will start by explaining how we do plan validation by based on the distribution to vector model. Recording, recording that the next model with the shadow of the models from long span data. And similar to the distribution vector, we also assume we can extract uh, uh, such uncertain observation of activities from two consecutive video frames. And I will explain in the next slide how we check this. So let's so who said we our approach is based on some checking some motion level features from images and such features could be frame difference or optic flow. And we check such features from two frames and then we do casting so we can get a library of different library of clusters and each cluster has steps to a feature. And when we give a new video, it will still compute a feature based on the two frames. And we compare the distance between this feature and all the features in the library of clusters. And then we normalize those distances to approximate of observation uncertainties. And because in a video, human space slowly taking an action. So we assume that if the ordering of the activities remains the same for two consecutive distributions, then we temporary, temporarily merge them together. Now 
Now I will talk about how can we go from plan validation to plan validation given attention. I mean, I assume, assuming that we have pre trained the shadow domain model and the model that can, can track and just observe the activities from video plans. So we have such observation given some videos. And then we will use the creation of plan validation model to predict the future activities. And we, we, because we want to focus on prediction where the future, where the interesting event could happen in the future. So we use the future activities to compute the this from the recent observation to predict the probability that. And in the probability map, each part has a probability to show that uh, how, how how possible there, there, there is an interesting event uh, to happen in the future. And for all of the future steps, we, we predict the uh, uh, split probability maps. And we summarize them together to get a plan of information map, which shows overall where uh, very interesting events could happen in the future. And this is the entire framework. At each step, we have an image, and we have a prediction of bottom validation model. And we combine this addition with recommendation to the addition as the at the previous step. And we check the sum beliefs for multiple moving objects. And then we, we check the uh, observed action distributions from, from those beliefs. We fit this activity distributions into shadow from the mean model and then predict the future activities, which can be used to predict uh, the new plan of the addition map that can be used uh, in the next step. And then we evaluate our model with respect to this level, this level, not the attention model. And we also evaluated the, the predict the plan of relation to the addition map. And this, so these three images are checked from a bottom of the attention model. So this, and these three images are plan of relation to the addition maps, which should, which could show where interesting events could happen in the future. So here are the, here are the takeaways. So traditionally, we, we, when, when we have a perception planning pipeline, that is intuitive to know that we could improve perception to improve planning or planning relation. However, in this part of the investigate the opposite direction, we consider we, if we can use planning relation to come back to improve the perception of the current scene. So it's like a, you sometimes you can think ahead to better see the present. So now the next question is that can we uh, use even higher level computing modeling like uh, self-explaining to improve lower level combination functions? And I will talk about the, the work of learning from ambiguous demonstrations with self-explanation guided the reinforced learning. And we want to use self-explanation to improve control and perception. The learning of control and perception. So sometimes we want the agent to be, to be, to be able to respect their own learning. And, and this basically means that the agent can gain some insights from observing their own experiences and also teachers' successful experiences. And to get the insight, the agent could ask the question what makes my experience to be successful or unsuccessful? And this insight can be used as a learning guidance. And then when the teachers or successful experiences comes from humans, and this becomes learning, global learning from human advice. 
and they may assume that because robot is learning from humans, it could be better if robots has some knowledge of humans. And because, um, yeah, so the robot is learning from human advice. So we use the most learning agent um, as the agent of robots. And then we assume that we have a very challenging environment that can either give ambiguous transitions. So this problem comes from reinforced comes it comes to reinforce learning from ambiguous demonstrations problem. And the robot starts interacting with the environment, it will get some samples. That can be either failure or, or successful. The robot will do self examination with human greater background knowledge. And the self explanation process can be used to guide the learning, the most learning part. So now there are two questions. One is, what is the human read background knowledge? The second question is, how can we use self explanation to guide the guide the most learning agent? I will also in this slide. So because the human has some explicit task in, in his or her mind. Humans may understand the world with, with some, some concepts or relations among the objects in the world, like we and the world. So we give robots those predicates as the background knowledge, human greater background knowledge, and look at those background knowledge are part of the domain knowledge. So they can connection is for the, the class of tasks. The self explanation would be the thoughts would be like highlighting which relations are more important uh, to lead to successful decisions. For example, here a robot uh, assume that the green and blue is more important, so it uh, drives the robot to gradually push the green to the blue region. And the robot becomes much certain when it really pushes. The green to the blue region. And to use a self explanation, we propose two ways. One is to adopt product the self explanation values with a critic, bonding values, or this, this one, and this one. We get a single value and use that as a reward shaping signal. The other way is that we use the self explanation values to augment the, the observation space. Here are the experiments. There is a simple domain that uh, we don't have critics of L1 and L2, and the two colors are fixed. And there is a more challenging domain so that we have L1 and L2, and the two target colors can be changed. So here is a simple case. So you can see that no uh, one's going to explain that this is important and push ups. The target vision and then the self expression and this will be important. Green and blue is important and uh, push, the vision, push the blue region. And in this more challenging case, we will assume that the green and blue is important and the blue follow the base explanation first. And then because there's only one place for the city, it doesn't matter either whether the L1 is important or the, or the yellow is important. So, we could explain that this around is important. And this demo video shows that the uh, UPRI shows that the use uh, use uh, use a uh, similar list of doing service relations like uh, in this case we don't only use the word shipping and in, the, in this case we don't use split augmentation. And we found that sometimes robot does not really follow the self explanation. Robot is highly being at a run. Like it really does not follow, follow this. But it's highly important at a run, that's not follow this. 
have a more challenging domain. In this challenging domain, we have large number of predicates. And we, we assume that even all strategies are nationally located on the left part of the table. So the robot needs to also remove this black cover and then push to the target region, to the correct target region. So you can see that the robot does this plans that the cure will push to blue is important and push to blue. And in this case, assume that it's should be pushed to the yellow region. And also, go with figure out a smart way to remove the black cover and push that to the target, target region. And we also evaluate the on the toy domain, tagline domain. In the tagline domain, so tagline is this yellow circle. So in this domain, the ghost is a tagline. So tagline has not taken any power credit. However, the task of the tag is to if the ghost and to do this tag line needs to both the take the pellet and also look at that the there is a refractive time after taking a pellet. If the time if the time takes too longer to hit a ghost, then then the, the pellet will not be effective anymore. So here is the same video. Tagma wants to Tagma is waiting for goods nearby and also considers the best opportunity to hit the, the capsule. Okay, it has hit the capsule and the now it's focusing on goods that's nearby. And then it can for the user ghost. So here are the results. So we have three baseline reinforcement agents that can deliver the EP team, so the actor creation. And the soft material learning. And we, these three curves are results by using our self expander. So, these upper curves, we only use self expandation for ultimate states. And for the pink curves, we only use self expandation for ultimate rewards. And the red curve are the results that use both ways of using our self expandation. And we also have some. Baseline models like a baseline education learning model and uh, the population study model that we do not use tax rewards. And we found that for 20 billion BT inputs, our self explanation helps the learning to be to have to achieve better scores and to be more stable. And we also found that uh, when the environment has less degree of ambiguity, like a robot push simple case. Then, and then if we have a more powerful reinforced learning agent, the self-explanation is less effective at helping the learning. But our self-explanation still helps even when we have a powerful reinforced learning agent in a more challenging domain. And for the type of domain, our self-explanation also helps. So here are the takeaways. In this part, we open the direction of learning the self plan, which is like a human being introspective of themselves to guide the learning of lower level cognition functions. And we also found that uh, when the environment uh, or domain is too simple, which are those that could have less degree of ambiguities, doing self explanation is also less helpful. So for future directions, it will be interesting to explore how to use our self-explaining mechanism to have address other global learning problems. And another interesting direction is that if there are better ways to improve our self-explanation mechanism. So far, I have presented uh, uh, tools of cultural learning agents that can take him advice to improve their own learning. Basically, in the first book, I talk about uh, the conscious learning work that can then take him advice directly from the raw data. However, in this case, in the second part, uh, we are creating a work that the human takes human advice through the lens of predicates like 
which are human recoverable knowledge. So a question could one question could be what is the best way to take human advice? We would look at this way in the most of the time. And I will I will I will give an answer by talking our recently published blue sky blue sky paper. So the robots uh, take schema advice to help uh, your learning. Uh, how could it be the how could it be build the communication channels? So there could be three uh, possibilities. First, we can ask humans to figure out the robot's own internal directions. Second, we can uh, design a framework so that the robot and the humans share the raw data, like uh, images or image like uh, demonstrations. And third, uh, we can have robots and humans share human understandable concepts like predicates. So the first option is here is pretty bad because human, humans need to pay extra efforts to learn how to understand the robot's own representations, which are like those binary codes. And for the second option, um, it is fun, but when really we have explicit tasks, especially those that require require long-term planning, then you don't want the humans to try to try your memory. A long trajectory of videos. So we think that there will be scaling up issues for challenging tasks to improve explicit knowledge. And we think the third option is the best one because even for humans ourselves, they, develop, they have developed the symbolic representations for human to human communications. So in some ways, they agree that the robot should have their own representations for, for themselves. But we obviously, the, human, the robots and humans are together in a learning system, then you'll be beneficial if the uh, robot can develop a, a small representation so that the humans can easily understand the robots, the own robots, the own robots explanations, or give advice to robots. We have a symbolic interface. Human, humans are on the one side, you can take explanations generated from robots, or you can give advice to the robots. And you could, we, we could have some challenges doing this. We, we would have a challenge of assembling the symbolic interface. We could also have a challenge of approximating the set explanations. And also, we could have challenges of effectively taking human advice from the symbolic interface. So, in this part, I will focus on this challenge by drawing some connections to the self explanation work. So, in this work, humans give demonstrations at the test knowledge level. However, because human has some underlying uh, symbolic goals in human's mind, we think that it's, it's very important that if robots can have human's understandable languages to understand the human's wax. It's like a way to understand the song or someone who is judging to you. You should also know the possible meanings that the, the other human could have. So in this, in this framework, uh, the predicates will be human related background, will be supporting an interface. And all of it uh, to incorporate schema demonstrations with the help of the symbolic interface. And then you can use the self explanation hypothesis, which will be done after incorporating human rights through the symbolic interface. To help with the decision making component. Uh, 
I will uh, talk about conclusions and future directions. So my dissertation investigates uh, more ways to integrate the learning of different levels of collection functions together. And there are three research threads. In the first thread, I investigate the perception acting company and the work is important to real education learning. And in the planning, perception planning is company threat. I talk about the, I present the inquiry translation learning models from plan data. And based on this, I try to answer the question that if we can use plan validation to improve the perception. And finally, I investigate if we can use human like uh, introspective or self explaining behaviors to improve the learning of the whole cognitive system. So for future works, uh, there are three threats, and for future works, because I would look at that and report on self. All self explanation mechanically can, can be combined with this other two threats. Our self explanatory mechanism is closer to human level intelligence. There could be some challenges. So, for example, uh, we would have a challenge of defining the form of teachers' advice and formulating how can cultural agents to take the advice. We would also have a challenge of designing the self explanation mechanism and merge that into the learning framework. And because of the cultural learning involves many different levels of cultural functions, from perception to planning to some other components, it will also be a challenge in how can we do self explanation to improve the base of the Now I will talk about the, the combination between self explanatory case learning and the perception planning company. <coughs> The combination is best for learning is tasks that require explicit knowledge because you, are, you may need long term reasoning for such tasks, for learning such tasks. So, in the current self explanation work, it's true that we have human understandable concepts. However, that work does not have any formal action models or dynamics models. So, to combine the Planning, perception planning thread and a self explanation thread. It could be interesting to, yeah, so it would be interesting to think about if we can uh, use shadow domain model planning techniques to learn some, learn some domain models to help the self expander. And then they can achieve model based self explanation. And this can really improve. improve the efficiency and the generalability of the cognitive system. And uh, we could also consider the combinations between the threads of self explanation, cognitive learning, and the perception acting company. This could be useful because in some tasks that require more tested knowledge, um, we, we don't see it necessary to maintain quality in the face. However, doing self explanation could still be helpful. So here is an example. So in the avoidance work, we assume that the human demonstrations cover all phase of grasping mark, which means it covers all avoidance test knowledge. However, for in a more realistic settings, the non-professional robot users might not be able to give such complete data set of demonstrations. So they might cover partially, only partially partially cover the opponent's test knowledge. In such cases, we need a really, really need an exploration. And self-explanation can help us to write some useful guiding signals for, for exploration. But I'm also, I will not really talk about the, the connection between planning and acting. And I will uh, talk about this briefly with a demo video that I did. So 
So we make the energy delivery to me. So the robot needs to deliver two stuff ways, uh, like a form, and then the other is a cup of coffee. So in human's model, human does not think that the robot should carry them together because it's kind of unsafe from human's perspective. However, so this is an example of that. Carry them one by one. Here are the publication list. And the top two publications are those that I have made approved as after the proposal time. <coughs> and here are the awards. And uh, I recently I'm recently awarded the Maryland Robotics Center in Stockholm postmodern fellowships. <coughs> and again, I would like to express my gratitude to my Fantastic level members, my committee members, and some other professors that I have. So now I will be happy to take any questions. Great. Thank you. As well, we are again the questions. <laughs> okay, um, so you have to keep, keep the recording going. Yeah. But, uh, but for the public session right now, we have Anybody, including the people on the Zoom as well as the people in the room, post committee members can ask any questions. Um, so let's, uh, if you have any questions about the presentation or uh, the work described, please go ahead and ask. Uh, if you are on Zoom, just unmute yourself and ask questions. I think you have a quick question before I move this. But last week, we showed the robot, huh. and we talked about the we get it. Uh, so, oh my God. You want to let the robot and so, yeah. So the, the objective of this video is to show that uh, sometimes robots uh, need to change the plan that's closer to humans' mental model that uh, work with humans. But such a plan could be kind of a higher cost uh, from robots own perspective. So from humans' mental model, human believes that uh, Carry the coffee and the phone together would be risky. So human to robot to if robot wants to be trusted by the human, the robot could find a plan to carry the two one by one. So this is what it does, what it means it's planable plan. But it's, it's high cost because, because robot takes more energy to do this. Other questions? I had a quick one about uh, self explaining this work conceptual. Okay. Um, would you say self explaining is related to learning a model of the world or dynamics for the robot? Because um, mm -hmm. robot is trying to uh, develop a theory, perhaps a causal theory. Isn't that, uh, I mean, not say, isn't that? Uh, is it similar to learning a world model, or is there a different step? Yeah, this is certainly a great question. So, the robot learns from humans, the robot needs to have some human understandable concepts. Those are at the symbolic level. So, I mean, our current work, we don't have a model and we just uh, want robots to learn with the symbols to decide which predicates are more relevant to a successful position. But what you mentioned is definitely a good direction because sometimes we can go go one step further to make it further above the symbolic levels we can have like a running models and robot can use such running models to try to find the so there are two ways nice to learn to figure out which some symbols are important to accept the energy process. The other is to find a solution from the starting models to guide the cognitive learning. Any other questions? Yeah, so 
Question that uh, the array, what array? I mean, that's a lot of question. Like, can you compare the characteristics? Yeah. How does learning from demos uh, like get more characteristics than learning from tables? Oh, I see your point. Yeah, so, yeah, so, actually, most of the words of learning occurs from demonstration, demonstration is seen for. Uh, only very good compared to learning from labels because they typically assume that uh, it's very hard to learn from labels. Yeah, but yeah, but that's definitely an interesting to be a future work, uh, like a survey paper, for example. How can we reliably label the labels of the from object and compare that with learning from demonstration? Interesting. Another quick question for like for your research, okay, for the purpose of your research, how how do you set the boundary between the meta cognition, conscious level, and subconscious? How do you really sort of separate those intangibles? Can you repeat the question? Yeah, sorry. So, Professor Bosch, Bosch, this question is that how can I separate the, the boundaries between between the, between the different levels, like the subconscious, conscious, and middle condition? And how can I calibrate my works in those categories? So, I would say that uh, um, my works cannot be calibrated into just the by category like subconscious, conscious, and the middle condition, they cannot uh, like uh, combine them together. For example, in my avoidance work, the avoidance learning is from demonstrations which success, success, successfully accomplish a task. So in such case, the perception is not uh, purely subconscious. It's not like uh, directly doing a magnet from perception to act. So it's in the, something in the middle between Conscious and subconscious. So similarly, for self-explanation, it's, it's not just the formula cognition, but instead it tries to improve the learning of control and perception. So, so this, the work of self-explanation self actually spans over all the three levels. And the most closely is to, to a pure category. Classification would be the Shelly Shadow Shell to me, many works that I did with uh, you and Henry. This, because they, so in some elementary works on the, the direction, we then plan model from, uh, from plan traces that are generated from running a planner, as which has nothing to do with perception. And then such works can be purely calibrated into a level of conscious. Any other questions from the, the, the room here or in the Zoom? Going once for the Zoom people also, um, going twice. So what happens is after this, the everybody other than the committee members and, and the Antian will be excused. So you should get out of the Zoom, uh, leave the room and uh, and after, and then there would be a closed session um, with the committee. Okay, thank you. Uh, so you know, yes. it's, okay. Um, at this point, actually, uh, Karthi, before you leave, yeah. maybe can you help him put the committee members 
on the screen here. Uh, yeah, you should stop the recording. Right? Uh,